When directing the 2002 film Minority Report, Steven Spielberg worked to create a realistic world of the future. I hope we've sold the science in the first 20 minutes of Minority Report to allow the audience to say, okay, I buy the science, let me sit back and go for this ride. But how much of its science fiction technology has already entered into our lives? It seemed like a world that could exist in our near future. For help in creating the futuristic world of Minority Report, Spielberg brought together a team to provide a vision for the film's setting in the year 2054. I thought it would be a good idea to bring some of the best minds in technology, environment, crime fighting, medicine, to discuss what will, will a half a century from now be like. During the think tank process, we brought in a, a man from MIT named John Undercuffler, who taught us these kind of hand signs these hand signs were part of the main computer system used by the pre-crime team in the film. I think that experts and lay people alike watched the film, and there was a certain level at which it wasn't necessarily clear which things were real for real, and which things had been faked up a little bit. The gesture-based computer system became one of the iconic visuals in the film. But how much of an impact has this technology had in the real world? We're building this product, it's called G-Speak, the world's first spatial operating environment, and we believe that it's the future of how people and machines will interrelate. So we're looking here at a system called Tamper that we built to experiment and give people a, a feel for what the future of media handling itself might be. That means uh, film and television production, but also all, all forms of media handling. The reality has been this type of gesture system hasn't really caught on and doesn't seem like it will anytime soon. But in the years following the film's release, gestures have become a larger part of everyday computer use through touchscreens, motion-sensitive video game controllers, hand gesture games, and virtual reality systems. You guys are nodding like you actually know what the hell he's talking about. The idea of computer interaction through gestures wasn't the only way in which the film predicted how computers would play a bigger role in society. Think of a world where dreams and ideas can be observed, recorded, and analyzed. In the film, specialized equipment accesses and displays the mental images and ideas of the precogs. By tapping into the precog's cerebral output during these predictive mental storms, Pre-crime agents are able to translate the visions into hard data that is then used to locate and apprehend criminals before they act. While in the real world we haven't reached the point of deciphering and projecting specific thoughts or visions as shown in the film, neuroscience research seems to be showing some ability to visually interpret brain activity. On the campus of the National University of Singapore, Professor Helen Zhao and a team of researchers say artificial intelligence is letting them see, well, a version of our thoughts. Our brain waves are like encrypted signals and using artificial intelligence, researchers have cracked the code, identifying frequencies for specific words to turn thought to text with 40% accuracy. Give it a few years and we're probably talking 80, 90%. Results from the research do seem interesting, but anything approaching what is presented in Minority Report, of getting a full representation of people's thoughts and memories, likely won't be possible anytime soon. Where's my Minority Report? Well, as part of the development of a society, we, we thought a lot about media. Imagine walking through a shopping mall, only to be bombarded by advertisements calling you out by name and offering products tailored to your recent online searches or purchases. Advertisers will target you. A billboard will read your eyes at a great distance of 200 yards and directly project a soundbite. The road you're on, John Anderton, no is the one you're less going traveled. Right. Steven became fascinated with that and advertising and the blitz of advertising, how advertising talks to you and advertising thinks it knows you. That social issue of what will really be prized in the future will be being left alone. That became, to both of us, the most interesting narrative thing to write about. These systems scan and recognize individuals in real time, integrating personal data to predict behaviors, personalize advertising, and even enforce laws. He's been identified on the Metro. In the two plus decades since the film's release, these futuristic concepts have, in part, transitioned to everyday realities. Iris scans, and more commonly, facial recognition, are now used for everything from unlocking phones to airport security checks. 
While we don't yet have billboards that call people out by name, the film's vision of hyper-personalized marketing has become a reality through smartphone and computer use. Data analytics, cookies, location tracking, and browsing history allow companies to deliver highly specific ads tailored to individual behaviors, preferences, and even emotional states. Information which will be coming in like the great floods that inundated the earth for 40 days and 40 nights during Noah's time. And that kind of Noah-esque flood is going to be when the information era just breaks the Hoover Dam and comes cascading into our lives. The futuristic world in Minority Report presents a highly efficient transportation system in its setting of Washington, D.C. Maybe the most science fiction-y thing about the film is just the look of the uh, maglav systems. You'd uh, press a button, your fireplace would move out of the way, and behind it, there's your car waiting for you to climb into it. It would just climb down the side of the building on a magnetic system. It would merge on a kind of freeway and take you without any chance of having a traffic accident at going speeds of 120 miles an hour right to your destination. In today's world, while magnetic levitation is used in specific high-speed rail systems like maglev trains, magnetic roadways seem unlikely to become a reality in the next few decades. But self-driving car technology has grown over the past several years, in part relying on GPS, LiDAR, and complex algorithms to navigate roads and traffic. While the technology may seem as a major convenience for some, it has also caused a lot of problems in the years since its introduction. Spotted in West Campus early Sunday morning, one driverless car, then another, then another. More questions tonight after a robo-taxi meltdown in San Francisco's North Beach neighborhood Friday night. Driverless taxi company Cruise is blaming the 10-car traffic jam on connectivity issues. It was just insane. Like, I, they, they need to get better at uh, seeing where, where each other are positionally yeah. and uh, lining up. I mean, all of them are like facing sideways in the street, trying to navigate around each other. Minority Report is loaded with even more futuristic technology, from sound wave weaponry, six sticks, jetpacks, spider bots, and fast-moving plants. Even if some elements are more on the outlandish side, the film's portrayal of technology stands out for influencing the trajectory of product development over the past couple of decades. But Steven Spielberg was interested in more than new and future technology. During an interview around the time of the film's release, he gave a message of a coming Orwellian future, warning that surveillance will become commonplace in our society. You know, George Orwell's prophecy really comes true, not in the 20th century, but in the 21st century. And Big Brother is watching us now. And the whole idea that what little privacy we have now will be completely evaporated in 20 or 30 years because technology will be able to see through walls, through rooftops, into the very privacy of our personal lives, into the sanctuary of our families. And these violations will, will, will I think, be a detriment to society.